Live from FedEx Forum, this is The Odds Couple, presented by WinBet on GrindCityMedia.com. Here's Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. Hello, good people. Welcome to The Odds Couple. Single on fish! Single on fish! Why are we dressed so spectacularly today? Why are you? Because it's Oscars week. It's a special edition of The Odds Couple where each and every year we talk about the Oscars. We're going to talk NCAA tournament uh, as well. I am dressed as an NBA player going to the Oscars. Hoodie and sport coat. Hoodie and sport coat. My Jitty sport our Jitty. hoodie. It's his birthday as oh. we're recording this today. Nice. So happy birthday. Shout out. To the Jitty. Uh, Hello, Lang. What'd you dress as? I dress like a film school student watching the Oscars. There you go. Okay. I thought that was uh, the best option. Good. Two years ago, we wore suits. We wore suits, yeah. Last year, we wore the t-shirt tux thing. That's right. So this year, I But see, the last two years, it was its own show. It wasn't during the NCAA tournament. That's true. So we have to share this year. Yeah. Yeah. John Roser is here as well. Hello, John Roser. Hello. What would you say that the... uh, that the NCAA tournament would be the best actor, and then like the the the, the Oscars would have to be the supporting. Is that of this show? Yes, yes. Of this show. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I think that's a good way. Yeah, to they put have it. their own awards for those things. We could give some out. Yeah. We could give some out. Yeah. Uh, what are you dressed as today? Myself. <laughs> San Francisco Giants. Buster Posey? Baseball's back. <laughs> That's right. Baseball's back. Yeah. CJ Hurt Giants. is dressed for the Oscars. Hello, CJ. Yes, I, I thought we were all supposed to wear this today. Apparently, I didn't get the memo we weren't supposed to wear uh, this Lane today. couldn't find I this, couldn't apparently. Find it. I, tried. I, I was just, uh, as you know, I'm also a big big Kanye West fan, so yeah. I'm also just, I'm rebelling. Just You're like rebelling? He, okay. Just like he does. Okay. I say, I'm not wearing any of the crap you want all me right. to wear. All right. All right. I think that works. That works. Uh, so we got a lot of things to get to. We got uh, Lance Taylor is going to join us. We'll talk uh, NCAA tournament with him. Uh, also, Chris Harrington, our movie critic from yep. the Daily Memphis. Yes. He is going to join us to tell us about these movies because, uh, frankly, we're up front about it. Um, I, I, I haven't seen one of them. Well, I've seen some. And, and I, I, did, I did some homework. Yeah. yeah. I actually put some work in. Roser? Yeah, I'm excited to hear what he has to say about, uh, about Lincoln. Lincoln? Was oh, that, that, that was like 10 years ago, no, wasn't yeah, it? I don't yeah, think okay. that's up this year. Oh, okay. Lincoln Wait, was that the one where he was a vampire hunter, or was that a different one? No, no, that was the Daniel Day-Lewis one, where, uh, he, where Daniel Day-Lewis where won Best Actor. Where he left Oklahoma actor. and went to USC. Yeah. Where yeah. He, ah. yeah, where he won. I've always got a bone to pick with the Oscars, because I think they screw it up too much. But yeah. I t- the last year I really paid attention, like hardcore, it was the year Argo won. Yeah. Argo was a good movie. Okay. But I also saw that year uh, Django Unchained, uh, the Life of Pi, Silver Linings Playbook, and Zero Dark Thirty, and I thought they were all better than Argo. Yeah. Every single one of them was better than Argo. I thought Argo was fine, but I told yeah. Rosa it's like a movie we could have made. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's a good story. That's the part that made it so good, right? It's, it's a great good. story. It's a yeah. great story. Shout out to Ben Affleck. Shout out, yeah. Ben Affleck. Uh, all right, what did we, what'd we learn this week? It was a busy week. I decided if I write another book... Um, I want Avery Johnson to record the audio book of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I learned this week. I no, haven't had fantastic. him back in my life in a while. It was great hearing Avery Johnson on the call for some of those games. Yeah. yeah. Where is it? Um... Brady Manick might be the best player in college basketball because North Carolina completely Crumbled. collapsed it was unbelievable. when he was at when he uh, when he got thrown he's out the of the who, game. He's the one who looks like a drifter, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. 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 And nomad. He looks yeah. like small <laughs> hands. He like smells like cabbage. He hitchhiked <laughs> to the game. <laughs> CJ, what'd you learn this week? Uh, 15 seeds have never advanced past uh, the Sweet 16. Yep. And it's only gotten to the Sweet 16 three times yep. and in history of the tournament. St. Peter's so the, a 12-and-a-half the peacocks. point dog, the Peacocks, uh, to Purdue and Jaden Ivey uh, this week. Uh, we'll talk about that and talk about these matchups. Uh, also learned uh, this week, winning the NCAA tournament is hard. It's yeah. hard. Oh. Uh, it's so great about what happens in the first two rounds because you have those upsets because one team, frankly, just plays better than another team mm-hmm. on any given day. And that's why we lose some of the top seeds in a tournament every year. You know, then your top teams tend to be the ones at the end that are left standing, teams that are top five seeds, top four seeds generally. Cl- um, <laughs> but, you know, Baylor goes out and, and you see Memphis took Gonzaga to the brink. 
Yeah. Um, Arizona got taken to the brink by TCU. Kansas had a tight one with Creighton there for a while. Um, and I expect a tight one with Providence. Uh, you, you've got to be good for six. And it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And I, you know, I, I heard some Tiger fans talking about, oh, well, Gonzaga. I mean, they're probably going to lose in the next round. No, 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 no. Gonzaga's as good as they are. And they're still the favorite in this tournament. That's how well Memphis played yeah, in played, that yeah. game. But I think for teams to win it, you know, this might be the blood tasting that Gonzaga had. You know, a little scar tissue going forward. A little scare that kind of wakes you up. Arizona, this might be the scare that kind of wakes you up going forward. Because I look at that Arizona line, and it, that's, that's the fishiest thing like going on this week. You also need to have, like, the best player in the game in, in whatever the matchup is. Like, in, in that Memphis-Gonzaga game, Drew Timmy kind of woke up, and, yep. and yeah. they just rode him down the second half. And in that Arizona TCU game, uh, Matherin, Matherin. Yeah. yeah, got going and couldn't stop him. Like yeah. if there's one guy in these games that yeah. gets going, you're kind of stuck if you're the other team. And, well, no, and you're right, and that's why you know North Carolina was so dominant in that Baylor game because, well, they had two. I mean, R.J. Davis also was hitting everything, yeah. but Manic was. I mean, he what? He played thirty minutes. He had like, like twenty eight points or what? Yeah. I mean, he was unstoppable. So no, you're absolutely right. Jaden Ivey's that way with Purdue. Yeah. Like he's he is, um, he's that guy. And so I'm looking at our rundown here, and there is some total disrespect I'm seeing here. Oh, yeah. um, you didn't mention uh, Coda being nominated for best. No, player. but we're not going to hear anything from the Hogs. Arkansas's in the Sweet 16. That's a local school, a team of local interest. That's right. We'll talk about it. I mean, and, and to to y'all's point, you know, <laughs> the, the best player on the court sometimes doesn't play like the best player on the court. Go blue, go yeah. blue, absolutely. And when the go best blue. player on the court doesn't play like the best player for one day, for yep. one day, oh, uh, Kentucky, it. Kentucky had the best. Seven, eight players on what, the court. What, and Shibway was, was awesome. Like well, yeah, thirty and sixteen Al- in that game. Auburn, Auburn has the best two players at least, yeah. and Kessler and Smith, and they fall to Miami. That's the beauty of the tournament. You guys are right. Most of the time, if you got the best dude on the court, you like your chances of winning. Except in March Madness, when things just get stupid for some reason. I don't know why. One game scenario. And I yeah. watch the tournament, and I just think, what an unbelievable event that you hope just doesn't change. I mean, we've added four more games. Yeah, but I, I I hope we stay put. It because is. It's, it's so perfect. fun. It's so fun. It's great. It is. Um. Well, it wasn't great. Well, it was. I guess it was great for the Tigers. I mean, they got to the second round. They took the number one team in the bracket to, to the end and and fall short. Uh, but uh, it was a, a tough way to finish, even though it was a positive way to finish for the Memphis Tigers. Penny Hardaway afterwards talking about the loss. Great game, man. We went into halftime. Came out confident because we have to be. We understand that we were an underdog and that we were going to have to fight these guys. And went into halftime up 10 and then got it to 12. And then the Drew Timmy effect <laughs> came into play. He made some tough shots, controlled the game, got our guys in foul trouble, and the rest is history. It seemed like he got every offensive rebound or every foul or every bucket for them conse- consecutively. We've we witnessed that from the TV a bunch, just watching him be that dominant. And to see it in person, he, he made some – Fantastic shots. I mean, great defense, and he still made them, so that's why he is who he is. But overall, I'm very proud of my guys for fighting to get us to this point, and I hope that we made our school and our city proud. I, I, I think that effort certainly made the school and the city proud. Yeah. I think everybody was proud of the effort, and everybody enjoyed the game, and everybody thought that was great for Memphis. Two things that I hear, though, that I have to kind of take question with, issue with, I guess. One, the Memphis, in the Memphis oh. is back. <laughs> Well, no. wait a second. Back? Yeah. This season's over. Next season's going to be a whole, a whole new, new team. Yeah. I mean, right. that's how college basketball is these days. Yeah. So so what happens next year? I mean, they got back this year. I, I think the one thing that you look at, it was, a, it was a great game to end the season. If the beginning of the season's better, maybe that's in the third or fourth round yeah. as opposed to round two. I think Penny did a great job of turning things around. I think the team did a great job of turning things around. But we can't forget the first half of the season that well, was drama-filled and but crazy. It was, it was smart because it sort of like set very low expectations. I mean, it wasn't smart. I don't think they I mean, it wasn't long ago we were saying, well, they've yeah, got to win the conference tournament they, to get in. They, the, whole, the whole first part of the season was a disaster. And they had COVID absences and uh, the Tennessee game. All, there was a lot of mess that happened yeah. early on injuries. But in some ways, it – undercut the expectations so much that 
now we're saying they won a game in the NCAA tournament. What a great season the Tigers had. I mean, in August, people were talking about the Tigers as a team that was going to be in the top five that should have been a one seed, a two seed. Mm-hmm. So I guess considering everything else that happened, maybe it's a successful season. But they mean, had they, they didn't had, make the tournament a year ago, so I guess that's good. Right. Uh, they had one of the ten best odds at the beginning of the season to win the national championship. Um, the other thing, too, you're right, it could be totally – I mean – Jalen Duran's gone. I mean, he's going to be a lottery pick. And DeAndre Williams may not be back, and he's like 30 years old. So, right. Like, you, and to be real, those were your two best players the entire season. Mm-hmm. Like, those were your two best guys. I know Lomax had some great moments in the tournament, uh, especially, you know, the Boise game, which was, you know, un- an unbelievable gutsy performance after he turned his ankle. But your two best players were Jalen Duran and DeAndre Williams. And, the Amani Bates thing was a disaster. Who knows if he's coming back or not, but Duran's not, and Williams may not. And so, yeah, you're talking about having to replace your two best players. Um, it'd be nice if Memphis is at that point, you know, where, yeah, you can do like an Alabama football thing or like seemingly how Gonzaga does this every year. They just kind of reload, reload with new, the other guys. Yeah, and they're awesome. Like, hopefully they can, or like a Kansas does, you know, how they're just they're really good every year. I mean, you hope they can, but yeah. I mean, you don't know that yet. Right. Every year the team has taken, the program rather, has taken a step forward. And so they went from not making any tournament to making the NIT and not just making the NIT, but winning the NIT last year. This year, I know the expectations from fans and from odds makers was high for what this team could be, but they still managed to take a step forward, even through all the muck of the loss to Ole Miss, the loss to Georgia, loss to East Carolina. Murray. Mur- well, Murray is a yeah, good team. but still, Murray, you're on your home you, floor. Come yeah, but, yeah. you know, Murray's a good team. Yeah. I will, you can throw Iowa State in there as well if you want to neutral site. Um, they still found a way to not only get to the tournament, but win a game in the tournament. This is a step forward. You can't go from zero to 60 without first hitting 40, 50. Right, so that that's what the Tigers are doing, and Penny Hardaway, if he's shown he can do nothing else, is he can go out there and get dudes to come play. Oh yeah, and 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 as long as he can do that, the Tigers will have a chance to compete with Houston, I guess, next year, and whoever else is in the American after that for the 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 crown in the American and be a tournament team year in year out. Yeah, the big story in the tournament uh, through the first two rounds is St. Peter's 15 seed knocking off Kentucky and then knocking off Murray State and did it in impressive fashion. I thought the Murray State game was even because weird things happen as we talked about in the yeah. first round. They knock off Kentucky. Okay, Cinderella story crazy. But now you're taking on a good Murray State team, and they really controlled that game from start to finish. It was pretty impressive. Their head coach is Shaheen Holloway, and after the Kentucky victory, he was asked about the uh, emotions of his team as they were going through it. You know what? To be honest with you, I didn't really have any emotion. You know, it was like, you know, like we were so locked in. Um, like, we knew that we had a good chance of winning this game. It's crazy that sounds to everybody. Um, you know, it just, you know, and, and, and to be honest, it still didn't hit me, right? You know, last week we won a MAC championship. That didn't hit us yet because everything moves so quick. It's a whirlwind. Um, well, I think the guys were so happy and juiced. And I told them, I said, listen, man, we still got more work to do, so. I also heard him say, we're, we're from New Jersey. Yeah. We're not scared of anybody, and, <laughs> which, which I love because yeah. I hear it all the time from Brevin Knight. Yeah. Uh, but to hear from a it's coach like there in Jersey knows. City was pretty yeah. great. <laughs> what a story. It made me feel old because I remember Shaheen Holloway playing yeah. at Seton Hall, and now, and now it sounds like he's going to be the next coach of Seton Hall if that yeah. hasn't happened already. But good for them. Yeah. yeah great story. It's fun. And now they're a 12 and a half point dog to Purdue. Yeah. But they might cover. Best covering team in yeah. the country, as we told you. Yeah. A couple of notes from. <coughs> Excuse me, choked up from last week's show. <coughs> Best covering teams in the country that are left in the bracket. Yeah. Number one in the country was St. Peter's. They've covered two more. They're 23 and 9 against the spread this year. Woo! Houston was number five in the country against the number this year. They're now 24 and 12 against the spread. Man, they're good. Arkansas is 22, 12 and 1 against the spread, and Texas Tech 20. Three and 13 against Mm. the spread this year. So those are the best against the spread teams that are left. The worst that are left are Purdue against St. Peter's. Mm. Purdue's the worst team left against the number. They are 14, 21, and 1. 
against the spread, and then you have Michigan, uh, who's still left. They came in. They're, they're now 15 and 18 uh, against the spread, covering their first Wasn't two Wasn't that their games. actual record during the season, too? No, it was 17 oh. and 14. Oh. 17 and 14. Oh. Sorry. Oh. Top over teams, over betting teams this Gonzaga. season that are left are Arkansas. No, Gonzaga's not on there. Okay. Arkansas and Miami are the two that are left. The top under team that is left is St. Peter's. So, a St. Right. Peter's under. I would imagine the Gonzaga thing is because they probably set the over under already so high, too high because yeah. of how fast or they also play. They blow people out and then they sit their best players on the yeah. bench the last yeah. 10 minutes of the game. That, that also impressed me. I thought Memphis's athleticism would be more overwhelmed because they don't have the Jalen Zuggs on the perimeter. Right. And but Drew they were, doesn't need They were not overwhelmed athletically. They play so fast. Yeah. It's unbelievable, man, yeah. how they get up and down the court. Uh, a reason why to listen to this program, uh, program. and to watch this program, program. Is, is because we, we give advice, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and we give winners. And uh, last week, uh, our favorite prop going into the tournament was oh, yeah. what will be lower. The lowest score of the first round of the tournament, combined score between two teams, or Sister Jean's age of 102. One game in the first round, went under that total of 102. That game was Loyola Chicago. Yeah, how about that? It feels like that. Man, that's like oh, they also job right there. Yeah. Loyola Chicago. <laughs> Sister I think Jean I, had money yeah, on Sister it. Jean, I, I don't saw, know. I'm not I, saying. I'm not saying Sister Jean had money on it, but. but. <laughs> My other okay, a couple a couple things here on Loyola Chicago and Sister Jean. Mark <laughs> Mark Titus put out that picture of Chris Holtman. He's the Ohio State coach. Chris Holtman leaning over and shaking yeah. sister, and used the caption of "You could trouble me for a warm glass of shut the hell up" <laughs> from Happy Gilmore, <laughs> which is absolutely <laughs> hilarious. The other one is I think I saw Loyola Chicago is the first team in NCAA tournament history to shoot worse than thirty percent from the field, three point line, and free throw line. Wow. In a game. That's very difficult. In an NCAA to tournament game. Like, that was – I was watching that. I was like, they can't make a shot. Like, it yeah. almost reminded me of the – because the same thing happened to them last year against Oregon State in the Sweet 16. So, the Oregon State game, they got every shot they wanted and none of them went in. And it was yeah. that way than this yeah. one. They, I mean, I thought, oh, I, I thought Ohio State, though, was um, – was was more athletic. Though. Yeah. Well, right. we'll run down these games with Lance. We'll run them down them and uh, the numbers. A couple of interesting ones coming up this weekend in the Sweet 16. We'll talk Oscars later in the program as well. It's all ahead here on the Odds Couple. We'll take a break here on Grind City Media. WinBet, the official sports book partner of the Memphis Grizzlies, is Tennessee's premier digital sports betting app. They're bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand with some of the best odds in the game. From boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, they have what you need to win. Sign up today and use the promo code GRIZ. And after placing your first $10 wager, you'll receive $200 to bet with. That's G-R-I-Z-Z. There's no better way to enjoy basketball than with some extra winnings in your pocket to use for all of your favorite bets. And be sure to check out the WinBet Sports Bar at FedEx Forum the next time you catch our Grizzlies in action. Betting is a team sport. Join the WinBet team and bet with the best. Must be physically located in Tennessee and 21 years of age or older to participate. If you or someone you know needs assistance with a gambling problem, call the Tennessee Red Line at 1-800-889-9789. Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience updated with even more functionality. You can keep track of a team with news, social media, the schedule, stats, and the standings. And you can log into Grind City Media to watch and listen live to streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can check out Grind City Media articles, videos, podcasts, and GCM talent. See what's going on right here at FedEx Forum with our concert and event calendar. Plus, you can find detailed information on seating and concessions with Arena Maps. You can take the app into FedEx Forum as your mobile wallet, use it as your ticket to the game for Grizz Den mobile pickup, and as contact-free payment for Arena concessions. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. It's back. We don't get fooled again. Memphis, it's your turn. Pete Townsend, Roger Daltrey, The Who with an orchestra. Why don't you all fail? 
FedEx Forum, Friday, May 13th. Who are you? Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The Who, live in concert. There's more at TheWho.com. Welcome back to GrindCityMedia.com. Live from FedEx Forum. Now, here's more of The Odds Couple, Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. Presented by WinBet. Grizz fans, get game day deals when you sign up for buzzer beaters. Text buzzer beater to 833-550-0028. So that's 833-550-0028 to opt in for discounts to your next home game today. Get tickets, get hyped, and save with buzzer beaters. Visit grizzlies.com slash buzzer beater for more information. Welcome back to the program. This is uh, the Odds Couple. Program. We are talking tournament. We are talking Oscars, Academy Awards. Coming on the up program. Here in a, a little bit. Uh, we always on this program love to hear from um, sad coaches. Yeah. yeah. That's always fun. And Dan Mullen, usually. Dan Mullen, usually. <laughs> but uh, today we're going to hear from uh, John Calipari. Uh, <laughs> this is Coach Cal after his team lost to St. Peter's. Sad day, not just we lose a game it's that this season ended with this group and how much joy they brought to me and our staff and and i'll just say one thing you have an eight point lead and i'm a a guy that's been through a lot of these you have an eight point lead with three minutes to go you win the game so i really don't need to know well this guy did that and that guy did this and missed this and this and turn we had an eight point lead with three something to go I'm not taken away from St. Peter's. They deserve to win the game. They fought the entire time. But that's how I feel about it. That, <laughs> you know, they, these guys put us in a position to win the game. Let's finish it off. Mm. Yeah. Were these coaches doing their press conferences at, like, the Indy 500? Sounds or something? like it. Yeah, yeah. it was a lot of cars. Slipknot doing the same I was track. expecting, John, to say that every year teams are seeded wrong, and for some reason we always seem to get them. Yeah. But uh, he didn't go that way. He didn't no, he way. didn't. No. Could have made an argument. He's though, mature. He's yeah. maturing in That's his years. Maturing. Yeah. He's yeah. at the big boys. He table. knows having big think, leads in tournament games. He, he does. I think also this group of players, he's ready to turn it over and get the next group of players in there yeah. because sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. All right, joining us now is the co-host of Next Round Live. You can hear that daily from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. He's also on Twitter at the Lance Taylor and his picks daily at Lance'sLock.com. Lance Taylor joins us here on the phone on the Odds Couple. Hello, Lance. You know, Calipari and Kentucky absolutely murdered me. I'm sure a lot of people. I, I thought this was going to be an SEC heavy t- tournament. I don't know why I bought into that conference, but three of my final four were coming from the SEC. All three don't even make it to the first weekend of the college, mm. uh, the NCAA tournament. And now we've got this ridiculous uh, bracket challenge that I've lost with my, or more than likely have lost with my uh, co host. And uh, it's going to be uh, a bad payoff for me. So I'm not, not happy about Calipari and Kentucky blowing that eight-point eight, eight lead. Well, I mean, I, Lance, Lance, I, I tried to tell you, don't bet, don't take Auburn. History was not on their I side. Know. Did not and make Rick the, Barnes. Yeah, well, yeah, then the Rick Barnes, man, I can't help you. Like, I don't know what you're doing there. <laughs> I mean, there's something to that with Rick Barnes. Like, there's got to be something to that. I mean, that dude just cannot. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. All the time. I saw somebody call him. I think, Rosa, you may have said it or sent it to me. The Mark Richt of SEC basketball, where he's good, but he's not good enough to get you over the hump. He's not good enough to be great. His one Final Four, he had TJ Ford, who was like the best point guard in the country. Hell, he had Kevin Durant and didn't get out of the the round of 32. He had Kevin Durant and DJ Augustine and couldn't get out of the round of 32. (laughs) Lance, I will will ask you, how is the state of Alabama doing? Because you went in the last weekend with the Crimson Tide, with the Blazers, and with the Auburn Tigers all in the NCAA tournament. You come out of the weekend, and none of them are there. Yeah, I don't think there was any expectation, Roser, for UAB. And even for Alabama fans, I think, you know, coming into the tournament, three consecutive losses, they didn't trust the team. I think, you know, somehow a miraculous uh, Sweet 16 run would have been, you know, kind of the ceiling for that team. But Auburn fans are bitterly disappointed because when you looked at the draw, and especially the way it's played out now, you know, all you got to do as a seven-point favorite is beat Miami, and you're playing Iowa State, a team that won two games last year. And I know Iowa State's playing good basketball right now, and there was one particular moment earlier this season they were a top-ten team. But still, 
I mean, Auburn had a clear path to a Final Four, and we saw them at 22-1 and one earlier this year that they looked like maybe the best team in college basketball, and they, you know, at, at, at a point had the best front court with Kessler and Jabari, but those guys were 2 of 22, and you can't win basketball games like that, and they were just overwhelmed with guard play from Miami, and so I think Auburn fans are bitterly disappointed, but Alabama and UAB fans, I think they kind of saw this coming. What, uh, what underdogs are sticking out to you this week? Uh, Underdog-wise, I'm praying for Michigan. And maybe this is just because I'm so – and I didn't trust this Michigan team. I thought they were going to be one and done coming in. Um, but, you know, Michigan catching four and a half now uh, against this Villanova team that if they go on and win this championship, I'm definitely traveling on my bracket challenge. But, you know, Michigan's one of those teams they can beat anybody. They can lose at any moment. But getting four and a half, it, it seems a little low. Um, I think people are going to be all over Villanova. And then, you know, Houston only catching a point and a half. You saw what TCU did on the boards against Arizona. Houston will just, I mean, annihilate you on the offensive board. So, you know, I think Houston, I think you're getting value. I know it's only a point and a half, but I think Houston right now is a better team than Arizona. I know that's hard to say with a 5-1 against the 1, but I kind of like both of those. Yeah, in that Arizona-Houston game is the line that kind of stands out to me this week with it, as you mentioned, just being one and a half in favor of the number one seed and a team that's one of the favorites to to win the national championship this year. And and from what I'm hearing, the public is all over Arizona because it's one and a half. This this one's just kind of scaring me. Oh, I'm all on Houston. Man. I'm all on Houston. But, yeah, I am too. But then I, I wonder, that, you know, we keep talking that, about the TCU game, but isn't that what we were talking about earlier of that was their scare? That well, no, Here's why I got a couple reasons with, with Houston. One, if we look at what Memphis just did recently with the impressive win over Boise, and then they were right there up 10, up 12 on Gonzaga, and we know how awesome Gonzaga is. For Houston to beat that Memphis team by 18 points in the AAC championship game, and I watched all of that Illinois game. They just were I said, I'm like, they're just better than Illinois. Like, way better than Illinois. I'm like, how is Illinois the four and Houston's the five here? Houston looks, I mean, they they passed the eye test in that game. They look awesome. Arizona better watch out. And I, Arizona yeah, look, feels like a team kind of ripe for getting bullied a little bit. Yeah, and it's their head coaches. It's his first tournament. Well, Kelvin Sampson will coach circles. Or I'd put Kelvin Sampson up against any coach in the country. That guy's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I would agree. And, yeah, we are talking about Tommy Lloyd against uh, Kelvin Sampson, a guy that's been to multiple Final Fours with different teams. And they've just got so many athletes and really no pure star power now that Sasser's out. Um, but that is a scary team. But, you know, the only team I know that won't move forward is St. Peter's. I mean, that's how crazy this tournament's been. I mean, that's the only thing I can for sure tell you is Purdue will, will annihilate St. Peter's. Hmm. Hmm. I think I think Purdue will too. I do too. Um, UCLA is interesting because of what they did last year, and it's pretty, virtually the same team. Yeah. And and here they are, uh, and they get North Carolina here in the Sweet Sixteen, who knocked off Baylor. Um, it's hot. I mean, no, North Carolina's hot and all, but now now that you have four days off, um, do you expect UCLA to continue? Well, you know, UCLA, I think, is favored for a reason, Rob. But, you know, I, I don't really know what, what to expect because Carolina, after watching them the first, you know, game against Marquette and then the first half against Baylor, and they look like maybe the best team in the tournament. Yeah. And then to blow a 25-point lead, I still don't understand how you blow a 25-point lead, go to overtime, and win that game. It's ridiculous. Uh, to me, that was remarkable. And we talk about scares with Arizona and whatever other team you want to pick in the history of this tournament surviving and advancing and, you know, having that one scare and then finding a way to go on and not only go to a Final Four but possibly win a championship. You know, North Carolina, I mean, you know, the way they played in Durham to end Mike Krzyzewski, you know, uh, reign at Cameron Indoor, the way they played against Marquette and, again, the way they played for 25-plus minutes against Baylor, man, they're scary. But, uh, again, UCLA's favored in this game. And Juzang and that, that crew, they've got Final Four experience. So, uh, and I and I said this was maybe the dumbest comment. I was like, uh, okay, Shaka Smart's got the tournament experience, so I'll favor Shaka over Hubert Davis. Uh, that didn't work out. Uh, but again, when I look at this matchup, you know, I'll take Mick Cronin over Hubert Davis. Yeah, yeah. The, the uh, well, the other thing to watch out for UCLA, I saw that. Uh uh, Mick Cronin said, uh, "What Jaime Haquez Hock- Jr., who's obviously yeah. one of the Haquez, got a sprained ankle. Yeah, yeah, he did not practice today, so 
it, that's going to – that guy matters a lot to yeah. them, matters a ton to them. Yeah. Uh, who, who's the best team? Who would be your champion if you got to pick today? Well, again, uh, fingers crossed Gonzaga wins this. Gonzaga wins. I don't think I'm going to have to travel, so I'm going to stick with Gonzaga. <laughs> when you look at, uh, you know, just odds now moving forward, they're still obviously your favorite. They are a heavy favorite to get out of that region. So I'll stick with the Zags. Memphis played them tight. Memphis doesn't get in foul trouble. That's probably a different game. Uh, maybe they had their scare. Drew Timmy is just, uh, you know, he's a man down low. And if Holmgren's on and, you know, Nimbard is playing well, man, that's, that's they're not as good as they were last year, but that still might be the best team in college basketball. So I'll, I'll be boring and stick with that. But if not, I'll go back uh, up top and, and take Houston. All right. I like it. Uh, Lance, uh, how can folks, uh, I'm sure you've been busy, giving picks every day. I have, Rob. It has not been good. I'll be. We try to be transparent, man. It, it was a rough start to the tournament, so I feel like we're going to have a really good second weekend. It's really simple. We've got daily packages. Those are guaranteed. We don't win. You get your money back. But if you want the month of service that gives you every play, it's only 90 bucks. You go to lanceslog.com. That's lanceslog.com. We give you a free play uh, each and every day. So uh, lanceslog.com, all the plays are 90 bucks. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you much for your time. We appreciate it. Enjoy the next round. We'll talk again next week. See you, Thanks, man. Lance Taylor joining us, co-host of Next Round Live daily, you know, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And on Twitter at the Lance Taylor. Get his picks at lanceslock.com. Gonzaga, nine-point favorite against Arkansas. You have Texas Tech, the three-seed, favored over number two Duke by a point. UCLA, two-and-a-half over North Carolina. Purdue, 12-and-a-half over St. Peter's. And then on the other side, you have Arizona, just a point and a half over the fifth seed at Houston. Number 11, Michigan, they are a five-point dog to number two, Villanova. Kansas, and one seed in the Midwest, a seven-and-a-half point favorite over number four, Providence. And then you have Miami, the 10 seed, a two-and-a-half point favorite over 11 seed, Iowa State. We'll have our brackets, our picks coming up, and also we'll talk Oscars. That's all yes. coming up next on The Odds Couple here on Grind City Media. Check out the all-new WinBet Sports Bar located at FedEx Forum just off Bill Street Alley. Open every event night plus non-event Saturday and Sunday starting at 11 a.m. The WinBet Sports Bar is your lock for the best local brews, food, and all the games. Sports fans looking for action and a little extra juice can receive exclusive in-bar only promotion, including odds, boosts, free bets, and more from the WinBet Sportsbook app. Plus, watch all the games. College and Pro with over 30 TVs and Sunday NFL tickets. Parking is free for guests and available in the Gossett Motors Garage. For more information, go to FedEx Form.com. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He had this massive T-Rex behind him the whole time. So his name is Stan. That was like a movie prop from his times at Jumanji or something. Scientists were big mad when someone bought it for like $31 million a couple years ago, and no one ever knew who got Stan the T-Rex. I'm going to say Dwayne The Rock Johnson did not spend $31 million on yeah. Stan. Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Live daily at 8 a.m. on GrindCityMedia.com. John Contar, whose jersey I am donning today. 15 points, 17 rebounds. Reveal. Jitty season approaching. Jitty <laughs> season approaching. 17 rebounds is so outrageous. Yeah. It's outrageous. That's the no. most among any NBA guard this season off the bench. <laughs> That's Dennis Rodchar. The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on GrindCityMedia.com or wherever you get your podcast. Let's transition into our favorite all-time sixth man. This one was fun to do. Okay, let's go. Number one, Manu Ginobili. There's like a move that he brought to the NBA that is still done today, the Eurostep. Like there you that's go. Manu. That that without Manu, we have no Eurostep. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. IMHO on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. Welcome back to GrindCityMedia.com. Live from FedEx Forum, now here's more of The Odds Couple, Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker, presented by WinBet.
They lock in your 2022 playoff priority today and guarantee your seats to see John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr. in your next-gen Grizz next season. Secure the best seats at the lowest prices for the biggest games, including the Lakers, the Warriors, the Nets, and more. With 2022-23 Grizzly season tickets starting at 11 bucks per game. Plus, when you become an MVP member today, you receive all the next-level benefits, including special events, merchandise discounts, NBA League Pass, and more. Call 901-888-HOOP or click grizzlies.com today. Welcome back, everyone, to The Odds Couple, a very special uh, edition of The Odds Couple here today. Hooray for Hollywood. Hooray Hooray for for Hollywood. Hollywood. We've been talking NCAA tournament uh, as we are now in the Sweet 16, and we'll have our picks coming up here momentarily. Um, But we're also going to talk Oscars. The Oscars coming up, the Academy Awards coming up this Sunday. One of the movies, uh, that one of the pictures, I'm sorry, up for best picture, (laughs) is King Richard at plus 1600. Will Smith! Uh, is is in the movie, of course, uh, depicting Richard uh, Williams, yes. right? Yes. Uh, the father of Serena and Venus Williams. King Richard. King Richard. And uh, here is Will Smith after he won the SAG Award for Best Actor for that film. That may have been uh, one of the greatest moments of my career just now um, because my name was called for King Richard sitting next to Venus Williams. <laughs> Her sister Isha. Um, Richard Richard Williams is a, a dreamer like no one you've ever known. He has a power of belief that borders on insanity and sometimes tips over the border, which is absolutely necessary to take something from impossible <coughs> to possible. There you go, the great oh. Will Smith. He's really gone Hollywood, hasn't he? <laughs> well, yeah. He really has. Yeah. Good for him. I, I still like Kevin Garnett. Anything is possible better than that. Oh, you did? Impossible right. to possible or whatever, yeah. Well, it's a uh, it's a tradition on this very program uh, that when we talk about the Oscars, we bring in our movie critic himself from the Daily like the Rose Bowl. He is on. It's a tradition unlike any other. Uh, he's on Twitter at Chris Harrington. Chris Harrington joining us here this afternoon. Hello, Chris. How are you, man? What's up, guys? Hey, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, always enjoy having you on. Uh, because, frankly, a lot of us haven't seen these movies. Lang has. I have a question, Chris. I'll start this off. I actually watched Coda last night, which is winning all these other uh, award shows leading up to the Oscars, and people are saying now this is the the leader in the clubhouse for Best Picture. I thought it was okay. It was good. Is this that, a, that's is not this what you best? said. You told us it sucked. Well, it did. <laughs> is this, that's what you said. It was fine. It was like watching a Lifetime movie. But is this really the best picture for the last year, Chris? No, I wouldn't say it's the best picture, but I loved Coda. Um, it is a very conventional movie. It's it, it, in broad strokes, it's almost the exact same movie as Lady Bird from a few years ago. Yeah, except with a different setting. You know, you, you know, teenager coming of age, breaking away from the nest. Yes. Um, but it's set in a place and a in a manga group of people you've never seen before. It, it's 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 something that indie movies are supposed to do. It's like take you, you know, take you to a different place that you've never been. And in this case, it's a uh, the, the lead character is the only hearing member of a of an otherwise deaf family. CODA stands for Child of Deaf Adults. And to me, CODA is a very pure movie. Like, it, it, it it's a very emotionally affecting, but to me it earns it all. It's not man- manipulative. I think it's pretty great. Is it my number one favorite movie of the year? No, but it's... It, it's definitely on my short list. I'm a pretty big fan of CODA, actually. It was, it was like the perfect storm crossed with Glee. The perfect storm with glee. Man, man, you're 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 pretty cynical out there, Lang. Well, I don't know you were so hard hearted. Well, the other thing I didn't realize is like this, this is a movie that already existed. This is just a remake. It was a French it actually, movie. It is a remake of a French movie. That's true, and I have not seen the French movie, but I, the, the performances in this movie, um, the cast, the, the deaf yeah. actor, the, the deaf characters are played by deaf actors, most notably Marley Matlin, who's a former Oscar winner, then a couple of actors who are not well known. I just think this movie is. I think. I think all the beats are pure. I think it's really smart with the way it sort of um, doles out various sort of things about how deaf people communicate with each other. Yeah. 
I'm surprised. To me, this is a movie that I've recommended to a lot of people. There are movies I like better that I would not recommend as broadly. I feel like I was going to say this is a movie. If you haven't seen it, I guarantee you'll like it. But I guess not. I guess not. If you're like, Look. <laughs> no, my wife, my wife actually loved it, and I watched it and thought yeah, it's it's okay. Like it's, it's I, I just can't believe that they that we could. Or I guess the the Academy could vote that this was the best movie made in the last 365 days. Like to me, like I assure, I assure you, many worse movies have won Best Picture Oscars. Okay, what's it going to take? Like for Argo? The- is it better than Argo? Um, I already, like uh, it more than Argo. Okay, it's not as it's a much smaller movie than Argo. It's not quite as yeah. impressive as, Ar- as Argo in a way, but um, I like it more. That was the thing to me though. Is like I like movies to be impressive. Like I, I don't want to watch a movie where it's just people talking for two hours, right? Like, it's a pretty I, small movie, but like you know, that's, it's a lot that's better the than Green Book. Show. Yeah, Whoa. exactly. <laughs> oh, Green Green Book catching a stray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice shout out, Chris. What's it going to take for the superhero movies to get more love? Because I think if we are saying okay, best picture best movie i I would think spider-man um no way home would would be in that category what's it going to take for those movies to get more respect you know they they expanded from five uh nominees out to a out to 10 in part because of that because the dark knight was not nominated and they were trying to get those movies involved i think the dark knight should have been nominated yeah um i think it was one of the 10 best movies that year certainly I actually don't think the spy. I'm a sort of the wrong guy to ask from the Spider Man thing. I think that Spider Man movie is kind of overrated. I don't even think it's the best Marvel movie, much less like you know there transcends the genre. I don't think it's the best. Sp- I don't think. I don't think it's the best Spider Man movie. Um, I think Spider Man Into the Spider Verse is by far the best Spider Man movie. I would have welcomed that as the Best Picture nominee. Now, do I think Spider Man No Way Home is better than some movies that did get nominated? Yeah, and so I would have no quarrel if it was one of the ten nominees. I think that'd be totally fine with me. But I don't see it as some kind of crime against you know movies that that particular movie was not nominated. I was also disappointed that to me I didn't see every one of the Best Picture nominees. But the movie that I saw this year that was most impressive, like technically and just from a production standpoint, was The French Dispatch which got, I think, zero nominations in any categories. Yeah, uh, that was surprising to me. I, I would have expected that to get a screenplay nomination. I would have expected that maybe to get a Best Supporting Actor. Yeah. Um, and it did not. I liked that movie quite a bit, too. Um, that yeah. was on my year-end top ten list. Five of the ten Best Picture nominees were on my own year-end list, but so was French Dispatch. I do think that was a surprising shutout go. at the Oscars. All right, well, we let's go. let's look at the Best Picture. Power of the Dog is the minus 280 favorite Coda second at plus 400. Uh, where where do you think it will go, and what would you vote for? Um, I... I, I have no reason to disbelieve the uh, disbelieve the odds. I know this is a gambling show. My focus tends to be on whether movies are good, not whether right. they'll win awards. But, <laughs> but I'm trying to play along. <laughs> Reverse engineer this, Chris. It would not surprise me at all if Coda pulled what I guess is becoming increasingly less of an upset. Like, it really would not surprise me. The way the voting works now, they, they have this sort of, I guess, ranked choice voting or whatever. And so it rewards things that could be like the second favorite or third uh. favorite movie sometimes. And I think Coda is a movie that, other than Lang Whitaker, pretty much everyone likes. <laughs> and so it wouldn't surprise me if that sort of pulled an upset here. I think it'll probably be one of those two. As far as for me, I mentioned five of the of the of the ten nominees were in my own year in top ten. That was Coda, Power of the Dog, West Side Story, Dune, and Licorice Pizza. I guess Licorice Pizza is probably my favorite of the nominees. Licorice Pizza. That's Paul, Paul Thomas Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. That's Paul Thomas Anderson. It's, it's, it's not going to win. Don't bet on that. Right, it's right, PT right. Anderson to you. I also I, I tried to watch Dune on an airplane. Yeah. And I, not, I watched. Not the best setting for Dune. <laughs> well, no, I thought it, I actually thought it might be because I couldn't get away from it. And I thought I watched right. ten minutes of it, and I was like, man, this thing is boring. And I changed it. I watched. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try and watch this thing so I can say I've seen it. I watched another ten minutes. And I was like, God, I cannot watch this movie, and, and so I I gave up on Dune. So it's next ten minutes, though. It's more like more like snooze <laughs> than Dune. <laughs> what is uh okay? What is the power of the dog about? Because all dogs. I'm looking at right here is yeah, is it about dogs? No, it's a western. So the, okay, the power so, of the dog is a western. Um, it's a little bit of an odd western. It's set in Montana, but it's actually filmed in New Zealand by a New Zealand filmmaker Jane Campion. So she's using her home country of New Zealand is to stand in for like Montana of like, you know, the 1910s or whatever, but it's a Western, but it's not the kind of Western that's like, you know, cattle drives and shootouts. It's, it's really more of a psychological (laughs) drama, um, sort of a small like drama among a few different characters that happens to be set in sort of a Western setting. I like power of the dog a lot, but unlike Coda, it's not a movie. I would just tell people you're going to like this because you may not like it. It is a pretty slow burn, 
um, serious, small, sort of intense kind of movie. Probably not for everyone, but I do. I do think it's quite good. A, is this a, why a it only did? Uh, it was boring. To it, me. Well, it, yeah. it it did. Uh, it, it the budget is between thirty five and thirty nine million, and it did approximately. Uh, well, it was only on Netflix. Three hundred eighty eight thousand at the box yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to Lang's point, you got to put that stuff away because movies are way different now. That that was the a movie Netflix made for Netflix. And, Netflix. Yeah. Uh, and it was primarily seen on Netflix. They got a very small theatrical sort of run to qualify for Oscars, but it's primarily a Netflix. Movie. That three hundred eighty-eight thousand is because Roser gave his password to other people on Netflix. <laughs> 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 Chris, we t- we talked about it last year, and I just wanted to get your opinion. Are people going back to the theater again? Um, you know, maybe a little bit. Actually, I, I did a. I talked to Craig Brewer, our local filmmaker of note. Yesterday, he, his movie Coming to America is up for, I believe, a makeup Oscar or maybe a costume Oscar. I think it's a costume. I talked to him yesterday, and he sort of had made that point that he's gone out. You know, to see the Batman twice in local yeah. theaters. He's gone to see some other stuff, and he sort of feels like, hey, it's starting to feel more normal now. Mm-hmm. I think it depends on what you go see. I mean, I, I went to see the Batman in a local theater, and it was a pretty good crowd. I think there. Are, it's a really weird time for movies because they're, you know, we're coming out of COVID at least in terms of, you know, restrictions, obviously, but we're coming out of it into this landscape where most movies are going to these streaming services too. I mean, we we have, we have ten best picture nominees. I've seen nine of them. I've only seen three of them in theaters, and only one of them did I see in theaters the first time I saw it. Two right. others I went back for a second viewing in a the theater, but the only one of these movies that I saw for the first time in a movie theater was West Side Story, and I don't I lament that because I love the theatrical experience, but it's a difficult thing for movie theaters now to sort of figure out. People have gotten so used to the, you know these movies being available in their homes on these streaming services immediately. Well, I'm looking forward to the 2023 Oscars when the Best Picture winner will be uh, John Wick Four. Oh yeah, that's what I'm ready for. Okay, yeah, he's make got it more dogs. We can't keep letting this dude adopt dogs, hey, man. There Something will be no school. John Wick slander. <laughs> John Wick is goaded. Harrington, real quick, the true stars of of this award yep. show are the animated movies. What do you like in in that category? <laughs> I, my kids are now old enough where I don't feel like I have to see the animated movies. So I am 0 for 5 on the animated oh. movies this year. Oh. I have not seen a single one of them. <laughs> that's uh, the one I've seen all of them. People say Encanto is good. That's going to win. Flea is an animated movie that's not a kid's movie. Uh, it's actually a, a documentary, an animated documentary. It's supposed to be quite good. I have not seen it. I have not seen any of the animated movies. I'm not a big animated movie guy. CJ, you've seen them? Yes, I've all seen them. All right, em. so which one's winning? Mi- Mitchell's versus Machines. That, that's my pick. I love that movie. What, what are the odds on that? Encanto's going to be – you would think Encanto it's would be the win. one – but Disney has not, you know, here recently won a lot of well, they, Oscars, they, if, they, I, if I'm not mistaken. They you might as well just be speaking a different language to me. With you got to watch Mitchell vs. Machines. Like, what, what, Mitchell, Mitchell vs. Machines is cute. It's, is, it's no, the it's second favorite. Well, and Canto is uh, minus Canto's 800, and the Mitchells versus the Machines is plus and 500. And Canto has the uh, f- the most viral song of the year. And the it, Bruno the, song? Yeah, the Bruno song. Yeah. And it's got Lin-Manuel Miranda's involved in yeah. it. Like, there's a lot of things. A lot of stuff going on. The Bruno on. song yeah. isn't even the best song in no. that movie. I think it's, it's, it's a not, terrible it's, song. It's a, it's a horrible song. It's maybe fourth the or fifth best song. kids that are the age. I, yeah, I have a kid that listens to it all the time, and I can't stand it. And spiritually, I am the age of your kids as well. That's why I watch it. That's right. Chris, we heard from Will Smith. He's an overwhelming favorite. How good was he in King Richard, and uh, is he deserving of winning the Best Actor? He is. I, I thought I thought he was great in King Richard. Uh, King, King Richard to me is a good movie, not a great movie. It's a good movie. It's like, Kurt. but I think his performance is the best part of the movie. And I, I mean, if I had a vote, I would vote for Will Smith um, for Best Actor for um, for King Richard. I thought Benedict Cumberbatch and Power of the Dog, who's the other top contender, was very good too. But I would I would rather see Will Smith take that award, and no. I think he will. How was Denzel in that Macbeth movie? Did you see that? Yeah, I wasn't crazy about that. Um, I mean, Denzel is great. Denzel is watchable on anything. This is not one of his best performances, and I'm I, I don't you know I, I think that movie. There's a there's another um, Macbeth black and white Macbeth adaptation that was turned into a samurai movie uh, by Kira Kurosawa called Throne of Blood. And to me, they were sort of trying to imitate that a little bit, but make it a straight Macbeth. (laughs) I did not find it terribly interesting. Uh, As someone who even like would might actually like this, the idea of let's watch a black and white Macbeth, which I think most people would not, would not appeal. That idea would not appeal to them. 
even as someone who that idea does kind of appeal to, I didn't think it was very good. So I'm not I, crazy I think about we, that. I think a lot of us have a throne of blood jokes ready to go now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so uh, many. Uh, 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 yeah, well, first of all, is Slipknot my friend? That's Slipknot going to play that song tonight? Throne of Blood? That was mine too. It's got to be a Slipknot song. I think we were all looking at Slipknot for that one. <laughs> what would be, uh, Chris, would you, you have to admit, if you turned on ESPN tonight, what would be funnier uh, than seeing Stephen A. Smith or Adrian Wojnarowski do a live hit from FedEx Forum while Slipknot is playing in the background? I, I, Nothing? I, that, 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 that's definitely the intersection of Roser right there. <laughs> is, um, Stephen A. Smith and Slipknot. That's, I think the Venn diagram overlap of those interests is basically just Roser John in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know one song about Slipknot. I just think it would be hilarious. Uh, you remember the Creed guy. That's right. I forget. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which, which race or award do you think is the, uh, the closest race that we'll see? It seems to me Best Actress is a real toss-up. I, I gather maybe the odds, at least the stuff I've seen, is Jessica Chastain mm-hmm. is the favorite. Oh, she's great. I mean, a few, a, a few months ago, ago, it seemed like Kristen Stewart was likely to win. And then like two months ago, it seemed like Olivia Coleman was likely to win. I think that could go literally any which way, and I would not be surprised. Any of the five women could win that. It would not be surprising to me. So that one seems like, of the major awards, the biggest toss-up. Yeah. Which movie will take home the most? Oh, that's a good question. I had not thought about this in terms of most nominations. I think I gotta think Power of the Dog. Yeah. Even though I think it'll get upset, it might get upset in Best Picture, I think it'll win Best Director. I think it could be a split. If Coda wins Best Picture, I think I think Power of the Dog will still be, win Best Director. It's got three acting nominations. It's got a screenplay nomination, uh, you know, cinematography. I think it's, it's up for so many things. I... I think it'll be spread out, but that'll be the most. I think Dune has the most overall nominations. Most so overall you get a lot of technical categories with yeah. that. Anime. Hey, what was the one that uh, that was the big upset a couple years ago? The uh, the the South Korean the shape, movie, the, the Shape Parasite. of Water. No, no, Parasite. 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 Are any of these movies Parasite's better than great. Parasite? I love Parasite. I thought it was no. awesome. That was. No. That was one of the great. That was the great movie year of the century to me. That was that was the year of Parasite. Um, Once upon a time in Hollywood. Um, the Little Women re- 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 redo and and some other stuff, but that you know, Parasite and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like in the same year, was pretty major in terms of like legitimately great movies that were also pretty popular. Okay. And so no, I don't think there's anything as high water just Parasite this year. All right, uh, we we've talked about what movies you'd recommend to people and which ones maybe you wouldn't recommend to everybody, like Lang. Um, give me right. give, give me three you'd recommend for people who haven't seen these movies that, that they should go watch. I'll say Coda again. I think Coda yeah. is so, it's a movie that most people will really like if they give it a chance. I think West Side Story, the, the direction is so good. Uh, Steven's just so good, and the performances just pop off the screen. I think you give that a chance. I think people will like that. And then it's a good question because I think Lic- Lic- Licorice Pizza and the Power of the Dog really not for everybody. Um, I would say King Richard. If you haven't seen King Richard, like it's, it is worth your time. I, I think that's a movie I think a lot of people would like if they gave it a chance to. Awesome. Yeah. Chris Harrington, always a pleasure, man. We thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Enjoy Thanks, the Oscars this weekend. Thanks, we'll Chris. do it again next year. <laughs> Thanks, man. Chris Harrington joining us from the Daily Memphian. All right. So now... Picks. We know Picks. we know everything uh, about Picks. the Oscars, uh, and, and we got. Uh, let's see. Are there any other odds I need for the Oscars? We'll let you know about Jessica Chastain. By the way, is the odds-on favorite to win Best Actress? She's great. She's minus one fifty. Nicole Kidman at oh. uh, plus two fifty. She's sure. she in. Yeah, uh, she's in Being the Ricardos. Oh yeah, Ooh. yeah. And then uh, you have Olivia Coleman at plus five hundred, along with Kristen Stewart. The also, one, plus I, I, I spoke with our friend Jessica Benson earlier today about because she's a big Oscar aficionado. Also. Oh yeah. She she said the one movie that she thinks was really really good that no one's really talking about that could upset some things is Belfast, which is the uh, Belfast uh, oh. British uh, Kenneth what's his name directed it. Right. Best uh, makeup and hairstyle is yeah. where you oh. find Coming to America, the eyes of Tammy Faye. That's the favorite at minus three hundred. I would imagine yeah. best hair. That's just makeup and hairstyle. Saying, right? Yeah. yeah. Where's Cruella at on that? Cruella is second at plus five hundred. Dune at plus five hundred. What'd you think of the makeup and hairstyle in Dune, Lang? <laughs> 
Uh, then coming to America, plus 1,000, and House of Gucci at plus eight. House of Gucci? Yeah, it's, about, it's about a, a rapper yeah. from Memphis. No, no I, don't, I don't think it's that's It's about right. the, the family and how messed up they are. All right. It's time for our picks. Picks! Picks! picks. What we do this time of picks. year is we update our picks from what we had to start the tournament. Uh, I've only lost one. In the Midwest region, I have lost Wisconsin, yeah. but I, uh, I'll stick Gonzaga, Purdue, Arizona, Gonzaga, my national champion. If I had to pick someone now in the med- Midwest, I mean, how do you not pick Kansas as the one seed? Uh, yeah. You have a 4, 10, and 11. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I'll replace Wisconsin with Kansas as uh, my other final four. All right. Lang, you got some replacing to do. Oh, I didn't know we were allowed to replace. I don't even know who's in these Well, regions. you can now, but... Um, I, Arizona to me is the great pick from line. the teams I've seen and I watched. I watched that entire Arizona TCU game. Um, I thought Arizona just has so many different options and and they play with swagger. They play with like uh, confidence. I think they're. The, I still think they're the team to beat. And my champion's still alive. Okay, That's good. True. CJ or is it me? No, CJ. It's, it's me. CJ. It's me. Uh, I still me. got three in it. Freaking Auburn. Good lord. Uh, so I'm also in that Midwest region with you, Rob. I don't know. I, I really want to ride Iowa State. Mm-hmm. I, I think that they're so defense, good defensively. Defen- they're for- forcing opponent turnovers on one out of every four possessions. Yeah, they're so like, good if, defensively. If you can do that and, you know, there's some familiarity with them in Kansas. Should they get past who they got? Miami. Miami and get to a matchup with Kansas after Kansas get past Providence. I think they could they could upset Kansas. So I'll take Iowa State. In that region, two 11 seeds. I don't think we've we've ever seen two 11 seeds advance this far mm. uh, to well what would be to like a final four in, in the tournament before. But that I'm still rolling with the picks that I got outside right. of that. Roser, all right. Well, I've still got uh, I've still got uh, three of mine in there: Gonzaga, UCLA, and uh, Villanova. And UCLA, my champion. I, I took a shot with USC, mm-hmm. and I should have gone with you know Iowa State in that region, and not USC, who ends up losing by two in the opening round to Miami. But um, I took a chance with them, and you know it didn't work. Um, if I had to change something, man, Villanova's been solid, but UCLA. You want to go Houston there, don't you? Houston. Yeah, I think they're freaking good, <laughs> like really good. They, Houston is unless they're playing Memphis. They're a great, and I, great man, coach. I will tell you, Duke do beat Gonzaga earlier this year. It is not a guarantee that Gonzaga's coming out of that West region. Hmm. Duke's so, got to beat Texas Tech first. Duke has to beat Texas yeah. Tech first. Yeah. Yes, but no, I, I Houston's probably been the most impressive out of you know. If I had to pick a team, I, I'd bet Houston. Okay, in, well, coming out of that region. You know how much fun we had today uh, talking Oscars a lot. along with NCAA tournament. A lot of fun. Uh, next week. We're gonna double the fun again. More Oscar talk? No, we're no. not gonna we're not gonna recap the Oscars. Double mint gum. <laughs> but we got we'll be in the we'll be in the final four, and also next week we preview WrestleMania. Oh yes. yes. Yep. Stone Cold's back. Yep. WrestleMania preview. When I you hear the glass, week. eat your ass. Yeah. I have uh, to wear my, say. my Memphis 316 shirt. Yeah, what they, are we going to uh, wear for I WrestleMania? I have a Memphis 316 shirt. I've been, I've been I've the new WrestleMania, I mean, well, WWE 22 video game just came out, and I've mm-hmm. been playing that a lot the last two weeks. That's not a video really game. Fun game. That's real life. It looks I've amazing. Seen y'all in their yeah. play. It's unbelievable. It's an incredible game. It's well worth your while. It's a good preview for you. It. Know I got an NIL deal with some uh, underwear people. I, saw that. Uh, I might just try and get some uh, some, some tights or something. Yeah. Yeah. Get the uh, you know wear a wrestling outfit on here and show wrestling. show the dad bod. That'd you got fun. a jean jacket. The jean jacket. Get a jean jacket, Go. no shirt, and then just the wrestling draws. Cut Come the in here. Off. Let's get it going. Uh, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. That, we, that's a pretty wrestling to, outfit right there. That is that's pretty dead no, on. Then you need that looks one like some Shawn Michaels stuff. One you strap. Need one strap. Then when we get to the picks, the strap we can comes down. Pull the strap yeah. down. Yeah, Rosa, you'll wear the mask, right? Uh, I've got Mucha a couple. Libre. Yeah, you got, I've got a couple. A couple. All right. Yeah, I've right. got uh, I've got the I've got a 49ers one. I've got a uh, Grizzlies one. Mm-hmm. For, yeah, for the for the luchador mask. Uh, I haven't talked to him yet, but Dustin Starr is going to join us of on course. the show. I've got in. Uh, I'm just assuming. I mean, I, I hope he's available. Shirt. I've got a. I think I don't think I have my Sting shirt anymore. 
But I've got I've got a, I've got an Ultimate Warrior shirt. Okay. Yeah. So it's dress up time next week Let's here on the it. show again. Uh, Oscars today, WrestleMania next week here on the Odds Couple. Looking forward to it. Thank you for joining us here today. Good luck with your brackets. Hopefully you're still in it, or maybe you joined one of them Sweet 16 Second Chance deals. Uh, and good luck on that if you're in that. Good luck with your bets. Don't forget St. Peter's, the best against the spread team left in the tournament. They were number one coming into the bracket as well. For CJ, for Roser, for Lang, for Kimball and Robbie and Jacob and everyone behind the scenes as well, I'm Fish. Thanks for joining us here on The Odds Couple. We'll talk to you again next week when we talk wrestling here on Grind City Media. Oh, yeah. You've been listening to The Odds Couple presented by WinBet on GrindCityMedia.com. Tune in next week with Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker.